Well, first of all, we would like to thank Peter Easton and everybody that's organizing the CARE Conference for having us here. Um, we're going to talk about an interesting change in tax disclosure uh, standards with the Global Reporting Initiative 207. I'm just going to introduce myself really quickly. My name is Nicole Holden. I'm a PhD candidate at Arizona State University, and my dissertation is entitled, Does Green Mutual Fund Ownership Impact Firm Liquidity and Analyst Following? I have studied biology and zoology uh, with a year of PhD school at the University of British Columbia, and that kind of led me into this ESG research sector. So I'm interested specifically in sustainability framework integration. And Steve can now introduce himself. Hi, I'm Steve Orford. I'm a clinical professor of accounting, obviously here at Arizona State University. I've been teaching ESG reporting in our master's program for over five years and investing more and more time on practitioner research and case study in this ESG reporting area. So what is GRI 207 tax? It's the first global tax transparency standard. It extends the FASB and the IFRS tax disclosures that are required, and it has a focus on corporate behavior. So it's potentially a very, very important uh, standard. It's voluntary, but in a sense, many corporations that already follow GRI, it, it's virtually mandatory because tax is pretty obviously a material issue, both for the corporations and for stakeholders. It has some key features. 2071, corporations are required to disclose their approach to tax, and that would include their strategy towards tax. 2072, tax governance, control, risk management, corporations are required to disclose how they incorporate their, their tax strategies into their broader risk management processes, 2073, stakeholder engagement, and then perhaps the most important part of GRI 207 is 207-4, which is disclosure of country-by-country country reporting of income tax paid. That's potentially really, really important because many, many uh, capital market participants and corporations are pretty well known and they understand that corporations uh, use global tax strategies to underpay tax in certain uh, high-tax countries. So a country-by-country -country disclosure could potentially reveal exactly what their tax strategy is. So why is this important? Why is it interesting? Well, we view it as a standard that could potentially change corporate behavior rather dramatically in the tax area. And there's obviously some reasons to do that. You're probably familiar with some of them. There's a perceived global tax, corporate global tax avoidance uh, issue around the world. And studies in the United States say maybe 70 billion to 100 billion uh, is the cost to the US government annually. We do know from testimony from companies like Apple that they have stateless income where they have recorded income but don't even file a tax return. Companies like Starbucks in the UK uh, engaged in a pretty aggressive tax strategy. It was disclosed to the public. They ended up voluntary pay, voluntarily paying about 20 million pounds in additional tax. And then, of course, you might be familiar with the OECD's base erosion and profit shifting efforts. The goal is to set a minimum 15% effective tax rate. And the goal, obviously, is to limit tax competition around the world. So this standard is a linchpin for both stakeholders and practitioners. And we can see this through investors taking action, actually, with shareholder activism. Amazon, this recently happened at Amazon, where shareholders want Amazon to uh, release tax transparency disclosures that follow GRI 207. So our initial work in this area is, is nascent because GRI 207 is, is relatively new. It became effective January 1st, 2021. What we're trying to do initially is just tabulate the disclosures. And what you see on the 
table on the right is that in the ESG reporting area, we see a lot of disclosure in the uh, climate area and health and safety, but uh, tax transparency disclosures are, are way behind these other disclosures. So we expect to see that improve over the next uh, few years. So far, what we found is that most corporations don't address GRI 207. For example, it was a shareholder proposal at Amazon, as Nicole mentioned, and Amazon recommended a, a no vote, and it didn't pass. Walmart has adopted GRI 207, but notably, they only adopted 207, 1, 2, and 3. They didn't include any tax transparency country by country, how much income tax did we pay disclosures. And there are only a few early adopters. I've listed a few of them there. To give you just a brief example of how this disclosure could be interesting, this is uh, Alliance. And the data, you'd have to focus in on it closely. But what you would see is that with the USA, the alliance has a negative effective tax rate. But we learn why in this tax transparency disclosure, which is they've invested in wind farms and have uh, substantial credits, tax credits from those wind farms. And that's valuable directly relevant information for valuing uh, shares of Alliance, forecasting profits and cash flows. But it also reveals uh, to stakeholders how Alliance is behaving in this ESG area as a corporation. So that's one example. And we see several others there too. Luxembourg is usually viewed as a tax haven. And we see that Alliance has a low tax, uh, effective tax rate there but perhaps not egregious, uh, at least as I looked at it. All right. So a lot of practitioners and stakeholders use ESG ratings to determine how green a corporation is. Current research shows that there is disagreement among these rating agencies of which rating to give each firm. It's also been shown recently that risk is not statistically significantly correlated with the ratings, which is why we think that these rating agencies should take GRI 207 into consideration because it is both quantifiable and verifiable, and it can be used to determine the credibility of other ESG-related disclosures. So that kind of leads me into our other research question, which is whether these ESG rating agencies use GRI 207 in their uh, current methodology. So this table, just to explain, the first column is a listing of ESG rating agencies that are commonly used in literature and by investors. The second column is a date which... Uh, the latest methodology was released publicly online. And the third column is whether or not they talk about tax and how they talk about tax in their rating methodology. So interestingly here, there's several firms that don't talk about tax at all. Um, and our research currently indicates that some of these rating agencies are not sure if they do use GRI 207, but currently in all the methodologies, none of them explicitly say we use GRI 207 in our methodology to determine our ratings. So this right here is an example of how tax transparency is being considered at the FTSE Russell. And it's separate, as you can see, from risk management, but it's kind of under that corporate governance umbrella. So we believe that GRI 207 will basically make it so that investors can link the tax transparency, risk management, and corporate governance sections of this pie for a more holistic view of a company. So GRI kind of has the potential to highlight uh, risk and governance within each of these corporations, and it can be used by uh, practitioners and stakeholders alike. And we actually think that investors are going to revise their risk assessment and make decisions based on the release of these tax strategy disclosures. So with that, we'd like to thank everybody for uh, visiting our talk and please reach out to us if you have any further discussion points or topics that you like to discuss. Thank you. Thank you.